As Rebecca Luz watches David Beckham on Netflix reminiscing about the fallout from their romance, she alternates between anger and jaw-dropping frustration. The former captain of England speaks slowly, as though each carefully chosen word needs to be extracted. What surprises Rebecca, though, is what he chooses not to say. Nearly two decades have passed since his former assistant unleashed an unprecedented media storm by disclosing personal information about their relationship. At the time, Beckham didn't respond to it too much. She never imagined that he would finally bring up the topic, albeit in a roundabout way, after all this time. Despite shattering all previous watching records, Beckham's Netflix series of the same name tells the inside story of a worldwide football player and cultural icon, touching on every topic under the sun, including the romance. However, as Rebecca points out, Beckham isn't exactly forced to answer for it. Rather, he is merely questioned about how he handled the many tabloid stories that resulted from it. Beckham, 48, claims the reports were terrible and left him feeling sick every day, but he doesn't specifically mention the relationship, confess responsibility, or say anything slightly wrong. 47-year-old Rebecca shakes her head. Poor me, is all that is said. He must accept responsibility, she says, interlocking her fingers to avoid the urge to strike the screen. He is free to say whatever he wants, and I can see that he wants to maintain his reputation, but by painting me as the victim, he is making me appear to be a liar, and that these stories are all made up. It seems like he's implying that I'm the one causing Victoria pain. To be honest, she would have preferred that he had said nothing at all about what she considered to be a transformative experience. It was buried, in her opinion. She was happily married for a long time and had two kids. She has been living in blissful obscurity in Norway, where she works as a medical assistant and teaches yoga for the past 14 years. This place is far less judgmental than England, she remarks. People used to approach me at Waitrose, right up to my face, and use their cell phones to take pictures of me. People are cool about it here. They are indifferent. Well, I was with a married man once and I did this is what the majority of my Norwegian friends say. Everybody seems to have done something at some point. Not with married celebrities like Beckham, mind you. Few would have encountered as much derision as Rebecca, the daughter of a diplomat originally from Spain, who received a private education and was depicted as a sleazy senorita and obsessed with sex. She questions whether a woman would still be seen so harshly by society now. Now she's thrust back into the spotlight as a result of the documentary. She still experiences harassment, even though she lives in the mountains. However, because of the changing times, it now manifests itself in the form of cruel social media trolling. Seated in a calm nook of a downtown Oslo hotel, Rebecca observes Beckham expressing amazement at how he and Victoria got through the scandal and how he could muster the strength to report for Real Madrid training. He bemoans the tremendous strain on their union, and so the tightly scripted movie, produced by his own production firm, continues, giving Beckham a warm, sympathetic glow instead of posing any uncomfortable questions. He adds it was very tough to watch his wife suffer. His eyes get wet. Rebecca turns away, having had enough. She had really seen this twice. She admits that the stories were terrible, but they are real. In the documentary, he talks about how he eventually shuts down his private life. It's one thing, in my opinion, to keep your personal affairs private. Deluding the public is a different matter entirely, and a great deal of people had overlooked all of this. A great deal of individuals have moved on from the controversy, the entire situation, and everything. And he's brought it up once more in a way that is hurting my standing. It would have been so lovely if he had remarked, it was not my proudest time, if he was going to talk about this period and how hard it was. The statement that he didn't like witnessing his wife suffer is what bothers me the most. It disturbed me, since he is the one who brought about the pain. 
He could have just stated, I don't want to talk about it. This was a tough time. It's perfectly acceptable if you choose not to accept responsibility for anything because of your family and kids. And I wouldn't be here today if he had simply remarked that it was a difficult period for us and gone on. However, he deliberately created the impression that this was all my fault and that he was unrelated to it. She was let down, she feels, by both Beckham and the management firm that hired her. So in April 2004, she sold her story to the now-defunct News of the World, reasoning that it was coming out anyway, so I thought I'd try to control it. Information about their brief relationship damaged the star's painstakingly maintained reputation. In addition to being the epitome of football greatness, Beckham was also portrayed as a devoted husband and father who personified 21 century manhood. Posh Spice was, of course, the other half of brand Beckham, and for a while the story had global resonance, posing an existential danger to the former. Rebecca, who was 26 years old at the time, and stunningly single, was named the midfielder's Girl Friday, or client services manager, as she was formally billed, just a few months after the player had signed with Real Madrid. At Manchester United, Beckham had felt safe and secure throughout his career since he was 15 years old. Now that he was by himself in an unfamiliar city, 800 miles away from Victoria and his two small boys, Romeo and Brooklyn, who stayed in England, he was greatly depending on Rebecca to guide him through his unfamiliar surroundings. She remembers that he loved learning about Spanish culture, especially wine and food. I wanted to show him the real Madrid, so once when he was under siege in his hotel, I smuggled him out in the boot of my car. We had the best croquetas in the city at a tapas place, they said, after visiting bars in the hip Trekker neighborhood. She claims that Beckham quickly had a soft spot for her, which was shared. Sometimes, as they drove around Madrid, he would try discreetly to hold her hand. She further claims that during their lunch with the rest of his entourage, he would press his scandalized toes up against hers. He made me feel special and singled me out, she claims. The flirtation eventually turned sexual. She claims he seduced her on their first night together. She remembers, You're so lucky to be able to have whoever you want, she turned to him. I've never done this before, he added, staring directly into my eyes. I was like, Whoa! I mean, I stupidly believed his falsehoods. Rebecca was living at home with her parents at this time, Leandert Willem Albert Luz and his Anglo-Spanish wife Elizabeth, who once corrected Brooklyn's grammar when he requested for one of them apples. Brooklyn, it's one of those apples, Victoria remarked as the group of her, David, and the kids paid her a visit. She continues, laughing, Mummy, you can't say that. He is my customer. Even now, she continues to reprimand me on various topics. Mummy asked me where I had been when I returned home the day after I had my first sleep with him. Beckham. What place did you sleep? And all I could do was shrug. I remained silent. However, she was aware. All she did was glance at me and warn me to be careful. No amount of protection could stop their secret from being revealed, even in spite of her mother's warning. Being one of the most followed and watched men on the planet at the time, it was inevitable that pictures of the football player and his helper cuddling in a nightclub would surface. Several months afterward, Rebecca's story was released. Beckham stated at the time, noticeably omitting to refute the report outright. Over the past few months, I've grown accustomed to reading more and more ridiculous stories about my personal life. This morning's appearance is but one more instance. To put it simply, I am a very happy married man. My wife is amazing, and I have two really special children. Nothing that a third party might do would alter these facts. It is important to note that Rebecca has never concealed the fact that she has retained a large number of the explicit texts they exchanged twenty years ago. It took me a long time to decide whether to speak about this today. 
the woman states. If I don't say anything, they will call me the storyteller and liar. Additionally, I have a family and kids who have access to Google and the ability to view documentaries. Additionally, I want them to know that their mother had the courage to confront them and defend the truth. When I first went public all those years ago, I was a 26-year-old with no support system facing up against the world's most powerful couple who had public relations specialists and attorneys on their side. I stayed strictly to the facts and the truth at that time. I would have been caught if I had made even the smallest mistake. She then went on the reality television bandwagon and made a substantial amount of money, but not nearly as much as the £800,000 that was initially promised, all thanks to the guidance of PR whiz Max Clifford. She remarks that it seems like a lifetime ago. She remembered their first meeting after seeing Victoria in the documentary. They arrived for the weekend dressed like Barbie and Ken and got off the plane. They appeared quite pleasant. Victoria and I went shopping together, and afterward we spent time hanging out at the hotel while David signed a Real Madrid contract. Her keen sense of humour sticks in my memory. Additionally, I thought she did a good job in the Netflix documentary. She exuded naturalness, honesty, and openness. There was a moment when I laughed at her. For him, I am unable to say the same. She was aware of the upcoming documentary, but she thought it would focus solely on Beckham's football career. I distinctly recall thinking, well done, he's a terrific player. I never would have imagined that they would discuss their marriage. On Wednesday, it was released. I got up on Thursday morning, had breakfast with the kids, and then I browsed Instagram. Occasionally, I discover that I have a few hundred more followers than before. Thus, I didn't give it much thought. I left the kids at school and headed to my job. Journalists started calling her then, asking for her response. Then, for the first time, I realized that something had to have been said, but I wasn't sure what. I browsed through all the articles on the Internet at home. I was quite perplexed. Then, I was, to put it mildly, shocked after sitting on the couch and watching just one episode. After twenty years, her perspective on the affair hasn't changed all that much. She has tremendous guilt now, just as she did then. I was very sorry for what I'd done and the way I handled it, the woman recalls, adding, but the best lessons learned in life come from your biggest mistakes. She argues that regrets are useless. She never intended to cause the Beckhams' marriage to fail. Never, ever, ever. I want families and individuals to be happy. I'd like not to disrupt the situation. She continues, saying that if she hadn't had an affair, she never would have participated in the Dutch version of 71 Degrees North, a reality television program where she met Sven Kristjaskaja, a doctor from Norway who would eventually become her husband. Things take place for a purpose. I have a great life now with my amazing spouse and kids, she continues.